Hey guys and welcome back to my channel, Blue Nose Trading. My name is Tori Solis and today I'm going to be unboxing my new Giffen Grip. I did get the full size Giffen Grip and not the mini because I make some bigger things so I wanted to have more options and plus I got my new Shimpo Aspire wheel so I have a full size wheel head. But the Giffen Grip mini does fit, or I have a Shimpo Whisper now. My old wheel was the Aspire which is the smaller one. Let's see. It's like pizza. They said it's perfect. Thank you. Registration forms. Some instructions. More instructions. Okay, I've never used a Giffen grip before ever. So, I need these. Let's get the stuff out of here. Alright. Are neat little boxes. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's a parts. Great. Whoa. All right, gonna orient here. You know, all this stuff kind of. So I can get this boxing out of the way. Really quick. Oh, my. All right, step one, measure the potter's wheel. Okay, well, one second. I don't have any measuring devices. Okay, I was not prepared for that, so. Wheel is 13. understand. I kind of got stuck here for a second because the measurements for where to place the legs on the Giffen grip are in something metric and my ruler is only in standard measurements and I don't know the conversions off the top of my head which created mass confusion for me and eventually I just decided to wing it and I would just make slight adjustments whenever I got them on. Well I'm gonna guess there are three of these brackets. They are going to go equidistance around the wheel to fit on your wheel head. They gave you some nuts and bolts that you have to use to secure these brackets. So the initial measurement tells you how to align them and then you're going to need to put them on with these bolts and nuts, which at first I was very confused as to how this entire situation worked. I'm not really a genius, but you flip it over and once you flip it over, you have to align the holes in the grip with the holes where you need to put the nuts down into, which isn't incredibly difficult, but it is incredibly frustrating because I kept dropping them. There's not a lot, like a good amount of room to get them down in there, so it's just, it was a trick to get them in there. It took me a second to get them all. Like I said, it's not hard, it's just frustrating because you drop them a lot unless you just got skills in this area. Also, you need a flathead screwdriver. I should have said that earlier, but I didn't know until I got to it. So you had to use a flathead screwdriver for this. 
It took a while to assemble it. I'm sure results may vary depending on your dexterity for these kind of things. Mine was kind of low, so it took me a hot second to get this thing together and it made me pretty frustrated. I ended up going and getting tweezers so that I could put the screws through the gap slot a lot easier. Magnetic screwdriver would probably work too, but I don't have one of those, so I did what I could with what I had. After I got all of them more or less secured and the screws all dropped in, I just went in and made some slight adjustments to make these grips fit snugly around my wheel so that when I attach it to the wheel, it doesn't shake or jiggle at all, just a nice firm attachment to the wheel head. It only took a couple adjustments to get it just right. Once I finally got everything figured out with the bottom brackets and the Giffen grip now sits on my wheel the way that it's supposed to, I moved on to figure out how the sliders and rods and all of this situation work. It's pretty simple. You spin the top of the head of the wheel of the Giffen grip around until there's an opening where you can slide the sliders into it and then you slide the you turn the griffin grip counterclockwise and that will close the sliders on a track around your piece which is pretty simple and then on the back of the sliders there's a place for you to attach the rods with the little handle so that the sliders are higher up where they're touching your piece there's also a slider that is slightly smaller and then a wider one and they kind of just looks like they give you a difference in how close and how small of an object that you're able to trim with those sliders. The first thing I noticed that really kind of put me off is that the Giffen grip is lifting my the top of my wheel head uh, about an inch or so just over an inch which is lifting it up above the splash pan. So while I'm trimming this piece, everything is flying everywhere. You can see trimmings flying into my toolbox, they're going off onto the floor. The splash pan isn't able to catch anything really because of the added height that is given to it from the Giffen grip. In addition, the grip wasn't as good as I anticipated. I probably could have made adjustments here with how I had it gripped and used different parts for this but immediately it, I kind of threw it off. I'm also getting used to my wheel speed because this is a new wheel for me so you know oops but I brought a backup pot so we can try it again because we have to do a couple runs on it so I'm just gonna spin it counterclockwise to tighten the grippers and now the pot is secure and center with minimal effort so as far as that goes it did what it needed to do and I'm gonna go ahead and trim this pot up for you guys. I took a second to play with the sliders. They sent two kinds of sliders. There's the basic sliders and then the wide sliders. And I wanted to know what the difference was between the two. I had a feeling that it had something to do with how big of a piece that you can put in the center of it. So I went ahead and just measured them out. It turns out that for the wide sliders, you get around six inches. And then whenever you take out the wide sliders and you replace it with the basic sliders and you push those ones all the way in. Oh no no, I'm backwards. These are the wide sliders. One or the other, you'll figure it out if you get this thing, but the one has six inches and one has about three inches worth of room and I forget which is which. It's not really important. You'll, you'll figure it out. I also took out the rods and kind of put them all together to see what that was all about and kind of visualize it while I was playing with them. It's pretty simple. They have little rubber pads on the end that are pretty flexible and then you stick those into the slot for the sliders and it gives you a bunch of options so that when you're trimming things of different sizes you have options for how you want to trim them. I took it all in, I trimmed a few pots with it and honestly I it's not for me. I've decided that I'm actually going to sell this on eBay because the people that I bought it from didn't have an excellent return policy. 
And that's fine. I just don't think this is something that I'm going to use. I can see some limitations here. I think the biggest thing is the mess that it makes with all of the trimmings and not being able to catch anything in the splash pan. That's kind of a big turn off for me. And then I have some forms that aren't exactly symmetrical all the way around. So I can't trim those this way because only the base is kind of centered. It's just, it has its uses and it has its downsides. For me, I kind of saw it as a more, well, an equally complicated way to do something. I mean, it's not easy to trim without it, but it's not easy to trim with it. So it was kind of a neutral and I would rather just get some money back on it. This might be good. Everyone's situation is gonna be different. It is well made. It's just not something I see myself using. So thank you so much for tuning in this week, guys. If you'd like to help support my channel to make videos like this possible, you can find me at patreon.com slash bluenosetrading. If you'd like to stick around and see a weekly art video, you can consider subscribing to this channel, Blue Nose Trading. Remember that you are super important and that you have tons of great ideas. Drink lots of water. Go hug your friends. I will see you guys next week.